This is the Forex Q&A podcast. This is VP, professional Forex prop trader here in the United States, answering your user-submitted Forex trading-related questions every Monday morning. Now, if you have a Forex trading-related question on your mind, don't ask me. You're just being lazy. Instead, you need to go to No Nonsense Forex on YouTube, run a search in the videos. Chances are I have answered your question thoroughly. And if you still can't find it, go to the No Nonsense Forex Discord forum. Link will be provided down below in the show notes and in the YouTube description. Now, I'm hoping this episode makes it on to YouTube. There is a little bit of a disconnect between YouTube and Podbean, my uh, podcast host. Uh, but we should be fine, but if we're not, at least you know why. Now, uh, we just came out with a video on Thursday about the awesome oscillator. And as usual, it went over really well because people like indicator videos. And as usual, there are always people who really like the indicator who are just waiting for me to talk about it in a negative way so they can chime in with the same arguments I hear over and over again. And this time, they did bring up a legit point. I don't know if many of you know this. Uh, I would say the majority of you don't, and I'll explain in a moment. But the Awesome Oscillator is in the Bill Williams family, and all of those indicators are meant to be used together in conjunction with each other. And the Bill Williams people were very quick to point that out. Uh, and they are correct. Now, that was the initial idea. I actually made an attempt to use them all together back in it's like 2011 or 2012. It was a while ago. Um, and I didn't read the book. I bought a course, and uh, it was a good course. I mean, really descriptive, explained it really, really well. Even added in the bits about money management, and uh, I put it together and back tested it, and it did okay. Um, it just didn't outdo systems that I was already putting together even back then. But if you remember the Ichimoku video uh, I set up before, therein lies the problem. When you are expected to use these tools and only these tools that were prepackaged by somebody else. Chances are there is a very, very, very low possibility that this is going to be your best option. And like I said in, what was it, the Elliott Wave podcast, I've said it a few times, but so many people go so deep into this and they spent so much time on it that they really don't feel like they can go back. And of course they're not getting the results they want, so they get very bitter about it. And then they show up right about when I expect them to show up. Uh, but that's the takeaway, even if I have to repeat it, is be very careful uh, when you have a system that you're supposed to use exclusively like that, and definitely don't go all in on them. Uh, but above anything else, I make these videos for you, and almost all of you listening right now are at the middle of a very high bell curve. So imagine a bell curve that goes very high and is very, very small on each end. My videos are for everybody in the middle. Not the people on the extreme left side that are just too dumb to do anything. You know, they need constant hand-holding every single step of the way. I don't make videos for them. And then on the, on the extreme right side of the bell curve, you have those people that are 10 years deep into Fibonacci or Elliott Waves or anything. And they get upset that I don't spend an hour and a half on the CCI indicator. And they think I am shortchanging the rest of you because I didn't do that. No, pretty much all the questions I ever get on the Bill Williams indicators are about one particular indicator. Not about the whole system. I would get questions specifically on the awesome oscillator, on the alligator, or on the MFI, you know, separately. And so that's what people want to know. And those are the people who I make videos for. So just something to consider going forward. I think most of you already know, but it's easy to forget sometimes. And speaking of things that are easy to forget... Depending on the situation, uh, I had a, a situation this week to where I had buy and hold investments, not buy and hold forever, uh, but if you remember the buy and hold video and then the holding precious metals video, I talked about, you know, you can go ahead and have buy and hold forever type strategies, but mix them in with other long-term strategies, which involve proper money management, you know, you taking off at certain points and moving your stop loss to break even once you do. So I actually hold precious metals in an offshore vault, which is kind of more my buy and hold. And then I have gold and silver ETFs, which have take profit points. Now, during this whole mess with Iran this past week, gold and silver make another run. My first take profit was triggered on two of those ETFs, and I was not happy about it. 
I mean, you got to understand, I have been banging the gold and silver drum ever since 1200. If you guys want to go back to episode 12 of the podcast, I think that's the first time I mentioned this to you. Uh, but rarely will I ever put a long-term financial prediction out there. I just don't think it's a very smart thing to do. So much can change. And then your prediction is out there pretty much forever. And I know there are just throngs of losers out there just waiting to discredit my channel because I got one prediction wrong publicly. So you got to be careful. But gold and silver were two things that I was just so positive on. I was okay sharing that with everybody on my channel. And then finally... The day comes for me to lock in profit, and I was not really ready to do so. Now, thankfully, I preset those levels, and so it just took off anyway. Uh, but that whole Iran thing was getting pretty heated. And I fully expect gold to take off way further than it already is. And as much as I am happy to bank profit, you know, there was a part of me that was like, God damn it, I really did set a take profit there, didn't I? And during that whole situation, it took out that take profit and then came back down a bit. And then the day after that, uh, once things had seemed to have calmed down and Trump made his speech saying everything was going to be fine, I looked at crypto, and crypto had moved up the day before as well. But then the day after, it still moved up. I mean, I think that day, Bitcoin Cash moved up 15% or in that 24-hour stretch that I was looking at. And I'm like, look at this obvious pump. What a terrible time for anybody to buy crypto. Little did I know, if you remember the crypto video, I had a trailing buy on a lot of different cryptocurrencies, and almost all of them got triggered. So now, on what my eyeballs told me was an obvious pump, if I'm going to follow my own rules, I need to go ahead and load up now. And that's exactly what I did. If it's a pump, it's a pump. You know, if it's going to go back down, it's going to go back down. If it's going to go down way further, that's okay. It's a buy and hold forever type of strategy for me. I mean, I do have some take profit points, but they're pretty far away. Uh, but there's no way I can sit there and preach to you guys how you need to follow your rules and get out of your own way if I'm not even going to do that myself. And it's so much different trading because everything's right there. You can kind of set it and walk away and you're good. But when you're in the moment, especially when you've been waiting for this move for such a long time, uh, which is, was, was the case for me with gold and silver, um, I did not expect emotions to come into play, but they did. And all of a sudden I thought I was Nostradamus and the best move was for me to trade the market by feel which we all know is the dumbest thing you can possibly do, but I found it happening to me just because of the uniqueness of the situation. But at the end of the day, I followed my own rules. No regrets. I'm super happy to have things like gold and silver and cryptocurrencies because we all have predictions on where these things are going to go and what the future of these instruments are going to hold. But we also need to understand that we could be completely wrong as crazy bullish as I've always been on gold and silver, there's a chance it could fall tremendously. And if it does, I will position myself from a trading standpoint to take advantage of that. So if it does happen, instead of being completely pissed off, I'll just be a little pissed off. It's a win-win, right? But for those of you who have buy and hold type investments out there, Understand, unless it's a buy and hold forever situation, you need to put those levels in so when the time comes, you don't end up jumping into your own way. If it can happen to me in 2020, it can happen to anybody. Nobody out there is smart enough to accurately predict where these things are going to go. So take a trading system that has been proven by you to work really well over a long period of time. Find what you want to buy. Plug the numbers in. You buy a con Dios. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. It is the Forex Q&A podcast, and uh, maybe I should have done this earlier. I don't know. But this is a question I got so often in the Big Banks video in the YouTube comments section, and I got it quite a bit back when I had Ask VP as well. And I always felt kind of bad because I just had nothing for these people at all. Um, but they kept asking me, hey, does this system work for options trading as well? And I really had no idea what to tell them. So a lot of times I just didn't answer the question on YouTube or I would just say, hey, you know, back when I had SVP and I was receptive to questions before people abused it, I would say, hey, look, I'm sorry, dude. I just can't give you a solid answer on that. Feel free to ask me something different if you want. Because options just wasn't my game. I'd spent so much time developing what I did in Forex and then for metals later on um, that I just never went that route. 
And there were elements of options trading that turned me off. And it turns out, in the end, I was wrong to feel that way because I didn't really understand the whole picture. So my understanding of options trading was almost like futures contracts to where, you know, you had these little creative ways to have money management built in, which was great. But I could not exit when I wanted to. All right, there was a defined point in time or a defined place on the chart where I was expected to take my trade off. And that was unacceptable in my world. You know, we talk about the importance of the exit indicator on this channel. Your exit indicator is your money indicator. It determines how much money you eventually make on the trade. And it's really, really important. And I prefer that method of taking off my trade way more than I would some predefined point in time or point on the chart. You know, that was always my understanding of how options worked. And so I just never pursued that direction. Plus, and it's not the fault of options brokers, but there were a lot of obvious scammers just barfing out affiliate links for binary options everywhere you looked. I get it all the time on my channel now. And so I didn't. I don't think that gave me any less of an opinion on options, but it certainly didn't improve it. Uh, but as a lot of you know, I am an affiliate for IGUS, and this relationship has been tremendous. Um, they absolutely love the work I have done with them, and they absolutely love all of you who have come over from this channel. I keep saying it. You guys are a coveted group of traders because we hammer money management home on this channel unlike anybody else on the entire internet. And this is golden for brokers because the last thing they want is what most affiliates do and just go for quantity and just spread themselves out as far as they can. So they're, they're just bringing in numbers. These people typically don't know what they're doing. Like most traders, they deposit money and then they lose it all. And, you know, that's the last thing these people want. They want people who are going to be constantly trading and not giving them a bunch of problems. And all in all, that is what you guys bring to the table. So I think word has gotten out because I've been approached by a lot of different brokers after I came out with the videos for Blueberry, Markets.com, and IGUS. Uh, but I'm really not looking to water things down. I mean, if, if these guys are going to be my top picks, those are my top picks. Uh, but I don't have anything for options traders. I know you guys are out there. And the largest options broker in the world, which is Nadex, just happens to be an offshoot of IG. So they came along and they're like, hey, we would like to work with you. Uh, we heard what you're doing for IG and the type of people you're bringing over there. So if you have any options traders out there, we are very interested. So I took a look at them. Uh, and yes, they are absolutely massive and tons of different directions you can go in the options field. Now, this is where I went wrong in the past. Uh, there are types of options trading where you are restricted to where you can actually exit a trade, but there's other types where you are not. And I'm like, oh, look at this. I might just be able to get on this in the future. Uh, because I'd always liked the idea behind it. I was just really turned off by the exit strategies, uh, which I was mostly wrong about. Uh, so this is something I do plan on getting into in the future. Uh, not the near future, because I have a list of things I want to get accomplished first. Uh, but this is definitely in the plans for the early half of this decade. Now, we'll be coming out with a no-nonsense options channel. No, I will not. Uh, this channel here was 10 years in the making. Uh, but I am, like I said before, looking to add those extra layers of protection and prosperity, hopefully, onto what I already do. You know, so I have Forex and metals and indices uh, that I already trade. And you can do all three of those with Nadex on their options platform. Uh, so any layers of extra protection I can add on in a field that I already have some expertise in, uh, that's going to be a slam dunk for me. Uh, but if any of you are interested in this as well, I have a blog for this episode, and all the information you need will be on that blog if you want to go take a look at it. Um, if you already are with Nadex, I'm not sure how that works or if it works differently. Uh, there's numbers on the blog that you can call if you have any questions at all. Um, but it's cool. They don't give you a cash bonus because those highly regulated brokers have a really hard time doing that. But that's fine. Um, I would rather take you know tight regulations, making sure my money is safe, as opposed to some one-time cash bonus. But they do give you some really nice things. Like you will get your own dedicated customer service rep if anything goes wrong or if you need help getting onboarded. 
Also, the guy I've been working with, Dan Cook from Nadex, has made private webinar videos just for people who go through No Nonsense Forex. So it is an affiliate link. It is on the blog. And if you click it, you will get those private webinars and dedicated customer service. Uh, or if you just don't like me and you don't want to support the channel, you don't have to. Uh, you can just read the blog. And if you like it, uh, just go sign up the old-fashioned way. But that will be in the show notes and in the YouTube description as well as everything is. But if you're interested at all, you want to go to the blog because it tells you the countries which are allowed to trade with Nadex. It's definitely the United States, but there's a, a good handful of others as well. And that is also where you will find the link you need to click. And what's also exciting about options as well is my prop firm, Maverick Trading, has its own options division. So you can go pro a lot quicker than you normally would if you were trading your own money by going the prop firm route. That's how I did it. Uh, but just so you know, Forex trading does not have to be your one and only route to becoming a prop trader. You know, this whole thing is just another avenue you can travel if you want. I will be there myself at some point, but by the time I get myself on the road, you will probably be way far ahead of me. But I am more than okay with that. So thanks for tuning in this week, traders. I was going to do an options podcast, whether Nadex jumped in or not. I'm just glad they did, and I'm glad I waited. If you have not yet, go to iTunes and leave this podcast a five-star review. Uh, be ready for a new trading video on Thursday and a new podcast episode on Monday. Traders, whatever route you take, whether it's Forex trading, options trading, buy and hold, or all of it, because why not? We're here to build, so go get it.